Hello again, everybody. Continuing the tutorial, and this is a Toyota Sienna. Same thing as the RAV4 that we spoke about before. If you notice, the schematic of fuel pump, and that's what we're dealing with, is almost similar. In the fact that we have relays, we always need a fuel pump, and we have a computer called ECM. ECM is not on this page. However, if you go to this and follow these letters, it is continued on this page. Engine control module. That's how Toyota refers to their microprocessor or power control module. Now, as we said before in the other one, let's say we have a problem with no crank, engine doesn't turn over. We think it's the fuel pump. We measure the, the fuel pressure, no fuel pressure. The question is, is it mechanical, is it electrical? Again, we always start with the same philosophy. Okay, then we work spark and other things. However, we know electrical, we need a fuel pump. We know we need relays. We know we need a computer. So, what's, where's the starting point? We know we need an ignition switch. Where's the starting point? If you're troubleshooting, you start from here because you think it's the fuel pump. If you're analyzing the schematic, you can start from the computer or you can start from also the fuel pump or the relays. But since there are so many fuses, it doesn't really pay to start f from the fuses because then you would be going over this line and this line and this line. So pick a component, a main component that has to do with the problem or something that you're focused on. I focus on a fuel pump. That's why I'm going to start my analyzation. Now, fuel pump needs 12 volts. We all know that. First of all, as you see over here, the fuel pump goes like the other one. We're backtracking again. We're backtracking. Like I said before, in a schematic, you don't always go forward, starting from the battery. It's not a rule. You start from wherever the component that you're dealing with, in this case the fuel pump, and you work your way back. So fuel pump here, here, and forget about this part. If it's energized or not we know that the current has to flow through this and this is called i believe if i see it correctly cir open relay now it goes to another one through this one efi relay which we had in the other one the raf4 so basically the circuitry is almost the same one relay another relay in series go through here now we have another path to go to. Do we go over here? No, it doesn't make sense. Somehow we have to come back to the battery. If we take this path, we come back to the battery. Now, <clears throat> once we have no, we know our path of direction from this, this way, now we can start going forward and going again in the other direction and say, okay, let me check it to see if I'm correct. If what I said was correct. So I'm gonna start this way through the through through this fusible link right go through here go through this one an efi uh, a fuse so far makes sense because this is the efi relay so obviously they're related so i'm going in the right path i'm going over here when this is activated we come over here there's another path if you notice i didn't illustrate it this goes to the computer we're not we're not really interested in that right now. We go this path again, this path again, the second relay in series through this. So it makes sense. So what we assume how to follow the schematic makes sense so far. Now let's fill in the little uh, uh, voids and details, how we come about that, how this is closed, how this is closed. Okay, we said current flows from here through here number one how does this get energized let's start off with this point how does this get energized let's follow the green 
We backtrack. We know we need 12 volts. We know we need a ground. Let's, let's, uh, let's for argument's sake, let's start this path. This is ground. So obviously this is not the 12 volts. So we establish at least this side of it is ground. Let's go to the other side. We go back up here. Aha, uh -huh, a fuse. So, so I might be going in the right direction because a fuse usually leads to 12 volts. Let's go the other side of the fuse. Okay, let's go this side, and then there's another side. This side, fuel injectors. Nope, that's not what I'm interested in right now. Why? Because I'm looking for a battery. So I take a quick glance at the component, what's in this area, and I see fuel injectors. You don't have to look at every separate one, but you look at the, basically the whole general area what it's dealing with. Like over here, I'm, I look at the whole area, and I see sensors so i know it has nothing to do with our problem so it's, i'm not worried about this area i'm not worried about this area i'm trying to come to an area where the battery is again we come over here so we said this is going to the fuel injectors then we come over here to the ignition switch that makes sense you have to go through the ignition switch right we go through here we go through here uh-huh through this one and through this one Okay, so we go through the ignition switch and through this fuse, 30 amp, this one, right here. Now, since we found the path for this one, now we could go forward. Before we had to backtrack, now we have to go, we could go forward. Let's go over here. Let's go over here. Now, can I go this way? Well, if I go in this path, we're not interested in this, in the armature, in this, in the load. We're interested in the control circuit over here. So therefore, this is not the path. We already used this path. Let's take the other path that we just did. Go over here, and this is closed. We're in the run position, right? IG2 actually means run. S2 means, ST means start. We go over here. One side of the fuse, come out the other side of the fuse. Come out this, energize this coil. This gets activated. This gets closed, right? Now current can flow, or can it flow? What do we say we need for current to flow? We need a complete path. Do we have a complete path? Current flows here, because this was energized. It flows here, here. But this has to be energized, Oh, okay. Now comes the hard and hard and tedious problem how to find out this is energized. We said this is energized right here from the B plus to the ground, the physical ground. Fine. Where's the ground for this? We know where the B plus is through this. Where's the ground? If you follow the line, guess what? Where it goes to? It goes to this area again, the ECM. ECM gives it a ground, just like we said before in the other one, in the other Toyota. Toyota is Toyota. So, actually, this is a physical ground, but the computer gives it a ground, gives this relay a ground. So, once it gives it a ground, it energizes this, closes this the switch, the armature, and now current can flow to this. So we need both relays to be on for this fuel pump to be on. The most important part is we need a ground from the ECM, from the power control module, if it was BGM, or whatever it's called, ECU, whatever. It doesn't matter the abbreviation, what it's called. The idea is it gives it a ground. Once it gives it a ground, then current can flow in this one, then current can flow in this one, and then the fuel pump starts to activate now taking that into consideration among other things now before we get to that let's look at the fuel injectors there's one thing that i said how do i know where the b plus is right away when you see all these connected you know it's a b plus line if you follow it back it goes right back to the b plus the what do you think these go the other sides computer the other side of the computer now other thing is 
this is gang together. When this is toggled, this is toggled. So if this is in accessories position, this is in IG2 position. When this is in IG1 position, this is in boom, star 2 position. So in other words, if I'm in starting and you don't see that part in this circuit, you'll see it on the st on for the starter circuit. You won't see it on this um, diagram. When I start it, I'm in this position. Th this is in ignition one. This is in the start two. Current can flow here, here, and guess what comes on when you're in the start position? That that light that we dread all the time, that malfunction indicator lamp, or no, check engine light. Where does the other side of it go? To the computer. So when this when you turn this on, the start for this for this vehicle, you get the check engine light through the computer. You know the computer is on. And you know this is, is it's like a, a, a testing itself, like a boot up. You'll get the check engine light. The one that we dread all the time that we always see check engine light, check engine light, right? Especially for inspection that we can't pass inspection with a check engine light. So we analyze this troubleshooting now. Now comes the hard part, difficult part. What should I measure over here? 12 volts. What should I measure over here? 12 volts. What should I measure over here? 12 volts. Why? Because I didn't lose any voltage through this. What should I measure over here? One side, 12 volts. The other side, zero volts. It's grounded. Let's say I don't hear the relays come on and I don't hear the, 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 the fuel pump and no pressure. I think it's electrical problem. I don't think it's the fuel pump. I think it's the relays. What do I do? Okay. Now, you're going to look at the, the fuse cover and look at the relays and you're going to look where the relays are and where the fuses are. However, if I want to jump this, I don't know which relays to jump from the fuel, looking at the fuse cover. I wouldn't know that whatever the CIR open relay has something to do with the fuel pump. I wouldn't know to jump it, right? I might not know that EFI relay has something to do with the fuel pump, but it does, obviously. That's why it's good to get the schematic. So I always stress that. So I come over here. Guess what? Fuel pump doesn't go. I come to this side. If I was able to measure this side, if I was able to measure this side, zero volts. Why do I say that? Because this is inserted inside and it's hard to measure it. Unless you have, again, an insert, a relay inserter or a relay um, a box to measure it. Let's say, for argument's sake, of the schematic, we measure zero volts. Right away, that tells me this is not functioning and this is not functioning. Now, I want to make sure, I want to know if it's the computer. We need the computer to give the ground. If this computer ground is not here, this does not work. This does not work for the current to flow through this. However, if you, know, if you look at one thing, this is still activated. Without the ground over here, I still have current flowing through this. And this will still be energized. So regardless, if I have a ground over here, this still will be energized. This will be closed. Where will the current go? If this is not energized by the ground of the computer, let's say there's an open from here to the computer. This is not energized. This is not closed. Current cannot flow. What will happen to this current? Guess what? There's another path to the computer. This goes right back, boom, to the computer. So regardless if this has a ground by the ECM or not, this will still be activated. A ground here. It will close it, and the current can flow wherever it's supposed to to the computer. So if I want to jump something, do I have to jump this one? Do I have to jump this one? Or do I have to jump both? Answer is you only jump this one. Why? Because we just said current flows here. This is activated. I don't have to jump this. This is the one I have to jump. From here to here. From pin 5 to, I guess, 3, I colored it in, whatever that number is. From here to here, you jump it. If I jump it and this comes on, that means there's a problem from here somehow to the computer. Now, I could do one more thing. I can give it a ground. If the computer could give it a ground, why can I not give it a ground? I'll give it a ground. So I'll take this pin one, ground it, right to ground. 
If this comes on, if the fuel pump comes on, guess what? That tells me something is wrong from here till here. Maybe there's an open in the wire. Maybe the computer itself. Right? Right? Maybe the computer doesn't have B+. Plus. Oh, well, we don't know. First, we have to well, jump this to ground. If nothing comes on, that means there's a problem somewhere here in this line. If the fuel pump comes on, when I ground this, right? And this, and this comes on, that means this is working. This is working. However, this is open from here somewhere in the wire to the computer. So you can jump two things. Jump this, this. Or I would ground this. So, like I said, troubleshooting is not so easy. Um, like I said, uh, um, I, I receive comments and things like that about being technical and or being too general. As you can see, when it comes to the schematic, there's only one thing you can do is be technical. Because there's no other way to explain such a such a analyzation interpretation or uh, troubleshooting technique from schematics, but being technical. If I be to, if I will be very general, you wouldn't understand what this is doing, what this is doing, and if this is not doing what it's supposed to do, what would happen? So you always have to be somehow technical. Anyway, please subscribe to my channel. My other channel is Joe Electronic Schematics from Auto. And Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Thanks for watching.